Hello everyone! Today I've started a brand new farm because I've got a new experiment to try. And if this works out, this might actually turn out to be the best use of time and energy for your first few days in the game. I realized the potential on this when I was doing one of my last live streams, and basically it involves making the field snacks. Now you can't make them on day one because you need your foraging skill leveled up to level one, so you could spend your first day chopping wood. I think a better use of your first day's time is going to be running around gathering all the forageable goods you can find. You don't have to find that many to level up to level one. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make our way through our maze, not wasting any energy along the way. And start foraging. Our first victim, one horseradish. Now the whole idea behind this little experiment is that in the early stages of the game, you're limited by two things, time and energy. Well, you're going to run out of energy long before you run out of time. And that's always a problem. You run out of energy and therefore you can't do anything else. This trick will hopefully give you basically unlimited energy to continue chopping wood, which will both level up your foraging skill and give you an abundance of wood, which can be good for things like fixing up the bridge at the beach to go get those valuable forageables on the other side. But the first part of my experiment is seeing if I can pick up enough forageables on the first day to level my foraging skill once. This is going to depend on a lot of factors, mostly being luck. The luckier you are in the first day, the more forageables you're going to find. I haven't found too many yet, probably because it's a neutral luck day. Since we aren't finding much, we're going to head to the beach. Always check garbage cans on your first day as well. I don't know if that counts towards your foraging skill, but you can potentially get items that give you lots of energy. Maybe today isn't such a good luck day. Nothing at all at the beach. I don't think I found enough to upgrade my skill just yet. Chopping down trees does upgrade your foraging skill, but I want to save all the trees I can for tomorrow. It turns out that picking items up off the ground gives you 7 experience. Chopping down trees gives you 12. You need 100 experience to get your foraging skill to its first level, which you need for this. That means on your first day, if you found less than 15 forageables, you're going to want to go ahead and cut down a few trees to make up for it. 15 forageables. If not, start cutting down trees. Based on my rudimentary math, that should do it. So we're just going to head to bed right now and then tomorrow we'll get started with this crazy idea. Well, it turns out I was still just shy of the mark I needed to hit my foraging skill. Luckily for me, I can just cheat my way through this. Increase foraging level, level 1. And this is what we're after, the field snacks. Now, field snacks are made simply from one acorn, one maple seed, and one pine cone. Now, the trick with these, what I'm hoping for, is they'll actually give you more energy than they take to make. You simply get these things by cutting down the appropriate tree. So if you use less energy than that, it will actually give you energy as you cut down trees. And that's what we're going to explore today. First thing I want to do is check my luck today to see exactly what we have to deal with. Hopefully we get some good luck. The spirits are very happy today. Okay, this is the maximum luck, which is good. So that should give me the most items out of the trees. I think luck is going to make a difference here. So the first tree, and also as I've said before several times, the most efficient way to get wood is to simply chop the tops off trees. Leave the stumps at their base for now. You can swing your scythe for no energy expenditure whatsoever. Okay, from all that we did not get anything we needed. And I'm going to continually throw out things I don't want for now, at least until I have the 50 wood I need to make a chest. Tree number two. Hopefully we'll get lucky. You can see the different varieties of trees. The maple tree and the oak tree look very similar. You can tell the difference by the leaves, the color of the trunk. Some people tell me one is bent, one is not. Well, this one's kind of bent. That one's less bent, I guess. We have 50 wood, so we're going to make a chest so I can start storing some of this crap because it's annoying having it on me all the time. One chest where I usually put it. Okay, we're going to put that stuff in. I'm going to put the sap in. Most of the things we're going to keep the wood on us and most of the tools. We probably don't need the pick. We definitely don't need those two. We'll take the axe and the scythe. That way we can clear the weeds to get out of our way and continue chopping wood. I finally got my first maple seed out of that tree. And I don't think it looked like this. So I'm going to chop down one of these now and hopefully get the item I need from it. And then I'll do a pine tree. I've determined though that it takes nine, ten swings. There's an acorn. There's two acorns. It takes ten swings to chop down a tree, which is actually 20 energy. So if you need to chop down three trees, that's a total of 60 energy. And the field stack only gives you 45 back. So it is going to be a deficit no matter what you do. But this is still a great way to prolong your day in the early days. Get more sap, which is good for fertilizer. Get more wood. And just get a lot of forging experience right in the early game. That tree gave me two pine cones, so already we can make our first field snack. And we're that close to being able to make the next one. All we need is one more maple seed thing. And I can remember again which one is the maple tree. I think it's this one. The more bent of the trees. I don't really know. Also, you can chop up these things out of the ground. They will give you something. The problem with identifying these trees is once you chop it, the tree disappears. and you, It's hard to remember what exactly you just chopped down at that point because it's no longer there. But I'm sure you guys will do better with identifying your trees than I am because I'm just not really paying that close of attention apparently. There's wood and sap. Okay, I've got three acorns, one pine cone to my name. So I don't need a pine cone. I need to figure out which tree it is. It's going to give me the maple thing. Energy is actually dwindling already. So I'm going to go ahead and eat a field snack right now. 
I managed to keep getting a lot of acorns, but the maples don't want to do their thing, which is really unfortunate. And okay, this is going to be a good determination. This is the big leaves up top, light colored trunk. What kind of tree is this? And that was a maple tree. Okay, so the big leaves, the bigger leaves are maple trees and I can make another field stack, which I'm going to do right now to eat because my energy is getting low. And I want to try and do this indefinitely all day if I can. And of course, at this point, because I have five acorns, I'm going to focus on pine trees and maple trees. Certainly don't need any more oak. So this is a maple tree based on its light color, big bendy trunk and big leaves. I have finally got my three trees identified. And as a reward for my tree knowledge, it just gave me another two maple seeds. So if trees can potentially drop two maple seeds, that would actually be really good energy, plus the cones in the ground. There's a third one. So let's try a pine tree, hopefully get two pine cones out of it. And then we will actually be making energy off this trick. Well, now the pine cones are playing hard to get. I'm really hoping this one gives me one because I'm running low on energy and don't really want to use any of my forageables yet. I was really hoping this would work. The trees being a self-sufficient source of energy. I am down to 14 energy, but luckily I found what's hopefully a pine cone in the ground and there was absolutely nothing in there. So that was a waste of energy. At this point, I think it's probably safe to say that your daily luck does not affect what the trees give you because I have maximum luck and I'm not feeling very lucky with what these are giving me. The pine trees just aren't giving me their goods. They give me lots of wood, but just none of the pine cones I need. I'm not sure if there's a maximum number you can get during a day. I kind of doubt it. I think I'm just getting unlucky. And that last pine tree did not give me anything. That did not give me anything. So you might actually be limited in how many you can find during a day because it's been a while since I found any anythings. But by now you guys can probably see how this would be a viable option if you were just a little bit luckier and were better at identifying trees than I am. Because if you actually know what ones give you what early on, you can get lots of balanced field snacks. Because so far I got way too many acorns, I got a fair amount of maple seeds, but I wasn't getting everything I need. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to chop down one of the oak trees to see if it's going to give me any acorns because the pine trees just aren't giving me anything and I think I might have just run out of these that I can even get in a day. You might be capped. Right, well, I'm out of energy. I'm out of forageables. I have literally two energy left. I do have almost 300 wood, so with a little bit more efficiency than I've done, you could actually go repair the bridge today and get all the forageables off the beach. I'm going to try this again tomorrow and I suspect that as soon as I start tomorrow I'm going to be finding lots of what I need until I hit my cap and then I'm going to stop finding them like I did today. And for my busy day chopping wood, which is a great way to gain experience by the way, I can now make a survival burger. My axe is a little bit more proficient. That doesn't actually really factor in at all. The second day doing this, I'm going to do it all quite efficiently though if I can. I've got five acorns, three maple whatevers, and so I know I need pine cones which come from pine trees. So we're going to chop specifically pine trees for now and see if we can chop all the trees on the farm today and see how much wood we get from this. Right away, I can't help but notice there's two pine cones, so I think it does limit to how many you can get in a day. So we'll make two field snacks right now. Now I still have acorns, so I need the maple seeds and pine trees. Well, this is a maple tree. Let's cut it down. Then we're going to try a pine tree. Magically, there's a maple seed, so I think you are limited to how many you can find in a day's. Also, avoid cutting things next to the pond. I just lost some things into the pond, which I fear might have been what I was looking for. Anyways, next pine tree. Also, these little seeds sprout up next to existing full grown trees, so you might want to consider leaving a few of those around because you can just chop those up for two energy and they'll give you hopefully what you're looking for. Let's give it a try right now. There's a pine cone. That was easy. So every few days, even if you just come around and knock all those up, you could still make field snacks out of those. Look how productive we're being today. We've already got four field snacks, which yes, would make up the energy we've used so far. And we're left with one acorn, one pine cone, so we need a maple seed. So we're going to chop down the maple tree, hopefully get that. And yeah, today we're actually making energy rather than just losing it. That tree gave me nothing, so I'm worried I've hit my cap. False alarm. We got a maple seed from that bad boy, so there's one more field snack. There's five field snacks, which is good for 225 extra energy. We've only used a little over 100, so we're actually gaining huge amounts of energy by doing this. We're also getting foraging experience and we're getting a lot of wood, which is important. I would suspect too that the trees obviously grow trees of their own kind. That way this corner is all pine trees and I suspect this will be a pine cone. And it is. So that's a good way to look at it too. If you just need specific things, well you can actually make groves of trees. I would leave this with all pine cones, all pine trees, they would produce pine cones on the ground. I'd maybe try and turn this into an oak grove. I would let them grow some oak trees. This one should be a oak seed, uh, the acorn. Let's give that a try. Yep, there's one acorn. So that's another way of doing this too, you might want to look into. So if you had the proper trees growing, you could actually just probably do giant energy every day just off the things you find on the ground. This will be a pine cone, this will be a pine cone. Now we have an abundance of pine cones, so if we go find some of those sitting near the base of the other trees, we should get what we need. And that will probably also mean clearing the grass out from around the trees, because I don't think the seeds can grow through the grass. 
But clearing the grass takes no effort because swinging your scythe takes zero energy. And if you can get all these items at only two energy each, well, then you're making 39 energy profit every time you do this trick. And that is huge. If you do that every day or two, you're going to get an abundance of hundreds and hundreds of energy, which will carry you through anything you need to do in the early game, whether it's fishing or mining. I'm also using my scythe as much as I can right now to clear out the areas around the trees, because if they don't have any areas to produce their seeds, well, they just won't. That one was kind enough to give me two pine cones, and this should be another one right here, actually. So I'm just going to go ahead and waste some energy, chop some wood, and pine cone. There we go. Okay, so this trick will actually work out really good. Well, now that I've determined that this really works, this does give you actually a surplus of energy. I'm going to go to sleep and see how many of these produce their little seeds tomorrow. Because I think if I could just chop the seeds growing out of the ground for only six energy, that would be even better again. I'm just not sure how often those things actually show up. I'm going to spend the rest of today, though, just kind of working around with my scythe, clearing the room around the trees as much as I can to give them as much potential to grow their seeds. But in case you're wondering, I still have 25 energy. I could still chop down a tree and I have 10 field snacks, which is 450 energy. So I could replenish my energy and still have a ton to spare. Also, if you find saplings like this growing on your farm, don't chop them down. They're not a really efficient way to gather wood and they don't really give you anything you need. They'll just grow into a big helpful tree. So don't kill them when they're kids, unless they're your real kids, then go ahead. I've cleared all the weeds I want to clear for today. The trees have lots of room to spread their seed. So tomorrow we're going to see if how many of them actually do. Hopefully lots, because then that would make this trick really, really useful. Already, I see one over here. It looks like the trees can produce seeds as many as two spaces away. That's kind of the feeling I'm getting everywhere. There's one that popped up here, which is curious, because these ones are actually chopped the top off. If you could chop the top off them and they still produce seeds, well, then this trick is really probably game breaking. There's another one up here, so we're off to a pretty good start. Already I can make uh, one more field snack at least. So far, honestly, not seeing a ton of these seeds out of the ground. There's a few around. There's enough that it will give me some energy. But I feel like at this point, I should probably start chopping the tops off trees again, despite the fact that I just found a bunch of pine cones. But I would say the stumps do produce seeds. Otherwise, how did this little guy get here? Unless potentially it was there before I chopped the top off, but I think I would have noticed it. Anyways, that was the full tour of the field. I picked up all the seeds I could find and the results speak for themselves. I got tons of pine cones, a few of the other things. So even doing them this way, you can make quite a bit of energy. I used probably 10 energy at most doing this and I got 45 energy out of it. So that's a pretty big surplus. Right, well, now I'm just going to go back to my treetop chopping ways and see what happens. Before I get too carried away with this though, I'm going to focus on maple trees first because I don't have any maple seeds. I've got four and six of the other ones, so I might as well do maple trees, make at least four field snacks before I get carried away. There's a whole bunch of maple seeds, so there's another four field snacks, which is a total of 180 energy just from those. The trees are no longer giving me seeds for today, but that's okay. I'm out of energy, but I'm up to 20 field snacks which is a total of 900 energy. Being that I have a total of 270 for any given day, this is obviously a great strategy. And we're up to 270 sap, so that will turn into tons of fertilizer, more than you're ever gonna need, 611 wood now. And we have lots of mixed seeds that I've just been throwing out along the way. Foraging leveled up yet again, because of course it did. I was chopping out a ton of trees, which is a great source of foraging experience. And today that about confirms it, just having these stumps of trees still grows the seeds around them so you can get the advantage of the efficient wood chopping for the top of the trees, get the seeds from them, and then they'll still produce the seeds around them every day. Just make sure you keep the areas clear. There's another one there, another one there. So I'd really quickly chop those up and get the seeds from them, make more field snacks. Those would only take six energy. That's a profit of 39 energy every time I do it. The problem is though, it's hard to tell what the trees are anymore. You can tell by the color. These light ones are the maple trees, these darker ones would be the oak trees, and the pine trees are these really gnarly looking ones. I think you guys get the point by now. This video is probably going to be a little messy in hindsight because I was just kind of blundering through it. Hopefully you guys get the idea pretty clearly. If not, I'll try and make a more refined video on it maybe or just incorporate it into some strategies. I really like this one because right away you can get both a surplus of energy and wood and sap so you can fertilize your crops right away. You can get way far down in the mines thanks to that energy and you can move over to the other side of the beach with all that wood. Plus whatever else you use wood for. I don't know, Marnie seems to like a lot of wood so maybe she'll enjoy it. Anyways, keep it up with the good video ideas, game ideas, all that good stuff. Hope you liked it, thanks for watching. Oh, also, if any of you are still here, this trick gets even better because apparently the stumps still spawn back into their trees. You just kind of cut them off at the waist and they grow back, because they're magic. So this trick is very renewable and the trees will come back after only a few short days. So the trick's even better than I thought. Day six, the trees are going back from their stump form. Okay, bye.